Hi, my name is Chris, aka The Philosopher's Games, or TPH Games, as my little games channel here is called, and today we continue where we stopped last time. Originally, in my modding guide for Elden Ring, I wanted to put everything in one video, but it got too long, so I had to split it. So in this video, when I say, as mentioned before, I mean last video. Still, this one should, for the most part, work as a standalone, and I also will add a section of the previous video here to explain what mod engine is. As explained in the last video, when it comes to modding Elden Ring, there's only a certain number of different mod types. One would be DLL mods, which for example Seamless Co-op is one, and the other example would be file replacement mods that usually modify or replace the so-called regulation.bin or other files. The randomizer and Fockade randomizer are mostly regulation.bin mods, but there are also armor replacement mods, and in addition the item and enemy randomizer also has some DLL mods included, so it's a combination of both. There are also direct injections into the software like practice tool and so on, but for mod engine only the first two I just mentioned are relevant. The cool thing about mod engine is that it leaves your installation of the game completely intact without changing anything. As long as you don't start mod engine and instead the normal game, the mods are not loaded and you can even play online again. And then when you want to play with mods, you start over mod engine and the mods load in and the game starts in offline mode without anti-cheat and you're not in trouble at all. So that's a pretty cool system in my opinion. Mod Engine is a modding framework developed by the modding community of the FromSoft Souls games. And it basically allows us to load in mods into FromSoft's Souls engine, which they used forever. So since Dark Souls 1. There are two versions of Mod Engine. There's Mod Engine 2 or 2.1, which supports everything from Dark Souls 3 to basic Armored Core. 6. I think the legacy version of this also supported Scola of the First Sin and so on. And then there is a successor, Mod Engine 3, which supports everything from Dark Souls 3 to Night Rain. As you see, there's some overlap, and we will stick here though to Elden Ring, and in this case, you simply have both options, which is pretty cool. And also, our example mods, seamless co-op mod item and enemy randomizer and fogate randomizer all work with Mod Engine 2 and with Mod Engine 3. How to configure Mod Engine 2.1 and Mod Engine 3 manually. And the good thing is, you already know how it works if you have listened to this point carefully. In the section about adding mods using the user interface of the randomizer, we learned that all you have to do is tell the randomizer where these mod files are. And it is completely the same for mod engine as well, just that you have to do this in a text editor. First, you have to download mod engine 2.1 or mod engine 3, links are in the description. You will need one of them and both work for Elden Ring. We start with Mod Engine 2.1 and then I explain the same thing again for Mod Engine 3, so maybe skip ahead if you use the other. After downloading Mod Engine 2.1, extract it somewhere on your computer. It has not to be the folder of Elden Ring. In the folder, you find a file called config-eldenring.toml that you have to open with a text editor. And I know it looks scary, but it's just two places in this file that are important. If you removed all the commentary from the file, it would look like this and suddenly it looks far less scary. The first one is called external DLLs. This is for DLL mods like Seamless Co-op. The second one is called mods. This is for regulation.bin mods and also other file replacement mods. And that's basically it already. Interestingly, if you give the correct pass, it does not matter where you copy the other mods if you set it up correctly. However, for mod pass simplicity reasons, I highly recommend that you copy the mod folders like the randomizer folder, the fog folder, the seamless co-op folder into the folder of mod engine 2.1 called mod. For seamless co-op, there's also the ersc launcher.exe. You can copy it but you don't have to copy it. Just copy the seamless co-op folder into the folder mods. 
Now open again the text editor for the config Elden Ring.toml and there in the external DLLs section in the square brackets you have to add the parse. The number sign or hash is actually a command that says ignore this line. You can now set an absolute parse including the drive letter or a relative parse which is relative from the folder where the mod engine 2 launcher.exe is in. If you copy anything as suggested into the mod folder then use a relative parse for parse simplicity. In the case of adding seamless co-op mod followed by two backslashes seamless co-op two backslashes ersc.dll. And this has to be in quotation marks. If you want to add now another DLL to it, another DLL mod, then you have to add a comma and then same process as here. In the case of the normal randomizer, I would recommend using the randomizer crash fix DLL. So mod to backslashes randomizer to backslashes DLL to backslashes randomizer crash fix dot DLL. For the absolute parses you also have to use two backslashes otherwise it's basically the same as parses in Windows. It is important that the last entry in the square brackets does not have a comma. Also if you use the auto equip and auto upgrade functionality of the misc page in the randomizer then you also have to add mod to backslashes randomizer to backslashes dll to backslashes randomizer helper dot dll. I also copy these lines into the description so you can look at them or copy paste them even and it should work when you use the same file structure that I also use. Then we go to the section mods and here we have to add the foregate randomizer and the mod randomizer. What is here unusual is that what is listed first is loaded last. So in the case of using foggate randomizer, foggate randomizer has to be listed first because it needs to be loaded last. What is unusual in the notation here is that in the square brackets you have these curly brackets and in it you have quite a few things. Enabled equals true which means it is activated if you write false you deactivate the mod, comma, name equals and then in quotation marks a name to identify it for you it doesn't matter that much to be honest comma and then pass equals in quotation marks the pass. In our case for the foggate randomizer it would be mod two backslashes fog then at the end a curly bracket and a comma and then the whole thing basically again just change to identify the mod the name and also the pass. For the randomizer you would have to add in quotation marks mod to backslashes randomizer and then curly bracket and then no comma if this is the last line. If you want to add like another mod let's say you want to add an armor replacement then it would look like this. In this case I used one called shield maiden and I put it into the folder shield maiden and in this folder shield maiden there's a folder called parts and in this there are the files for it. It's very important that it's called parts for the armor replacements. The default line here if you just have downloaded mod engine you can just delete. What it does is basically it pretends that all mods would be directly in the mod folder without subfolder so to say. So if you would take the content of randomizer of fog and of seamless co-op and copy it to the folder it would everything would load as long as there are no file conflicts and then it would also load I guess but if you now disable that line you also disable all mods but if you use the subfolder method then you have complete control what mods are activated and what mods are deactivated which I think is better. Also keep in mind that there are regulation.bin mods that are not compatible with each other or where the loading order is important like in the case of foggate and randomizer foggate has to be placed first and then the randomizer. And that is everything for the configuration file you need to know and you save the file and then click on launch mod Elden Ring .bat. then Elden Ring starts and the mod should be loaded. Of course the randomizer has to be configured and 
you have to press on randomize. Same with a Fockade randomizer, else it does not work. Because this creates a regulation.bin that mod engine needs. And now we come to mod engine 3. Mod engine 3 works a bit different than mod engine 2 because here you have different configuration files that you can create. And you have two options downloading it, the installer and the portable version. The installer has a convenience feature that if you double click on a configuration file, the game just starts loading the configuration file automatically, else you have to kind of change the line in the launch Elden Ring mods.bat file. The configuration file for Mod Engine 3 is a bit more streamlined than for Mod Engine 2, as you can see here. And I will also provide one to download in the description and also the content of the Mod Engine 3 files also in the description so that you can copy paste them if you want. I will use relative passes so you have to emulate the same file structure that I use, which is the folder Elden Ring dash mods and I copy fog, seamless co-op and randomizer into this. In the ME3 folder, mod engine 3 folder, there is always by default the Elden Ring dash mods folder, which I recommend using. And I then recommend copying your mods into this folder and then using relative passes again. As said in our example, fog, randomizer and seamless co-op, and then also, if you want to have these armor replacement mods, for example, create another folder, in my case, Shield Maiden, and then copy the folder parts into this. Then I would recommend making a copy of the file called Elden Ring default.me3. Rename it to something that you recognize what it does, and then right click on it and open it with a text editor. Alternatively, use the one I provide as a download in the description or copy paste the text from the description, which I also provide there. And as you already see is it looks different than the mod engine 2 config file. But what you do, it's basically the same. The first line with a profile version you can leave as it is, and then it becomes interesting. You now see this double square bracket notation. These double square brackets with like supports in it tell mod engine what you are currently defining under it. So support says game equals Elden Ring. So mod engine knows we're talking about Elden Ring here. Then we have double square brackets package and then in my file also double square brackets natives. Natives are the DLL mods and package are the regulation.bin mods and file replacement mods. It seems you separate the entries for example for natives or for package with a new line each until the next double bracket notation appears. You can also see that the path notation is different from the notation in mod engine 2.1 where you used two backslashes and here you only use one slash. It's not even a backslash. However, to add a new DLL mod you have just to write square brackets two times, native square brackets two times a new line and then path equals and then the path to the DLL file of the mod. In this case, Elden Ring dash mods slash seamless co-op slash ERSC dot DLL. I use here single quotation marks, but I think the normal quotation marks should work as well. But in the documentation, they mentioned single quotation marks are preferred. If you want, you can also add enabled equals true as well, but it is optional. With this, you can, if you put it to false, deactivate this section. Also, the number sign or hash can be used for commentary. So what comes after it in this specific line is ignored, but it's not the whole section that is ignored. And then for regulation.bin mods and also the armor replacement mods, for example, you have double square brackets package, double square brackets. Then it's optional again if you want to use enabled equals true in the next line, you can do this. Then in mod engine 2.1, we had name and then you could write down something. Here it is called ID equals the name for the mod that you can define yourself. Should be unique though. And then we have the path again. So for randomizer, it's Elden Ring dash mods slash randomizer slash. 
Also for the item and enemy randomizer to work, you have to open the .exe file in the randomizer folder on the fog folder, then a user interface opens. You have to connect them, of course, and you have to click on both on randomize with your settings. As said, this is in the previous video. And this then creates the regulation.bin file and every file that is needed. And only then it can be loaded by mod engine 3. And for the foggate randomizer, pass equals Elden Ring dash mod slash fog slash. And this, of course, in quotation marks. I use single quotation marks as said earlier. What is different than Mod Engine 2.1 is that what is listed last is also loaded last, which makes more sense. So this is a bit confusing. So in our case, the foggate randomizer has to be the last entry and before that has to be the normal randomizer if you want to use both. Though there is an interesting trick for that. You can write load underscore before or load underscore after in one of these blocks equals and then square bracket, curly bracket, id equals and then the section or block you want to load this block here before. In this case, we want to load randomizer before foggate rando. So id equals foggate rando, comma, optional equals false, curly bracket, square bracket. I know it's a bit complicated, but with this, you can manipulate the load order as well, but you could also just move the blocks around. Like I said, first block is loaded first, last block is loaded last. This load before or load after thing also works with the natives, but they don't have an ID. So the ID that you have to enter there is the DLL file name. Otherwise, the load order is the same as with packages. First native loads first, last native loads last. If I now want to, in addition, add an armor replacement mod to all of this as well, I just add another package block, write down the correct path, copy, of course, also, in my example, the shield maiden mod, I created a subfolder in Elden Ring dash mods called shield maiden. And there is another subfolder called parts and the files of the mods are in parts. If you have used the installer of mod engine three or ME three, then you can just now double click on this ME3 file you just created and it will start the game and load the settings. If that is not the case and you use the portable version of it, you have to, for example, make a copy of the launch dash Elden Ring dash mods dot BAT or edit it directly. You can open it also with a text editor and there you find the line that ends with Elden Ring dash default dot ME3. This is basically the config file that is loaded when you click on this BAT file to start the game. And you change it to whatever config file you want to load when you double click on this dot BAT file. By default, it's Elden Ring dash default dot ME3. In my case here, it is ER rendo foggate rendo seamless dot ME3. And you can change this to whatever you want. That's also why using the installer is a bit better because then you can skip this step here. Also very important in case you have a space in the file name, you have to set the file name also in quotation marks. So I recommend just not using spaces in your file names. Just use an underscore instead. And with this, you can just double click on your new dot bat file or on the old one on launch elden ring mods dot bat if you have modified that one and the game should start and load all the mods in that you have set up before in the configuration file if you have done everything correct and there are no notation mistakes in the file i hope this helps and this should help you to also implement other mods you find on nexus mods just do the same steps I explained for the randomizer or for seamless co-op for the other mods as well. And you can combine them. Keep in mind though, some mods might not be compatible with each other though. If something is not working or you have a further question, let me know in the comments, press the like button, maybe subscribe would be much appreciated. There will also be a video where I go through all the settings of the randomizer and try to explain them as well. That might take some time to complete though. and. You will find it linked there in the description later. Again, thank you people for watching. Huge shout outs to all the supporters. Much, much appreciated. And see you people next time. Goodbye.